Track stacks have been around for a while now in Logic, but they're still probably not as well understood as they could be. They provide a way, actually two ways, to organize and combine tracks in the tracks area. And even though, as with almost everything in Logic, there are other ways to accomplish much of what they let you do, those other methods can be less convenient, and in at least one case, much more difficult to implement. A track stack is a container for a group of tracks. It consists of a main track and a number of subtracks. The subtracks can be any track type, audio, instrument, aux, and they can be mixed together freely in a stack. When several subtracks are part of a stack, you'll see a display like this. The main track is at the top, and the graphic indicates which tracks are part of that stack. You can show or hide the subtracks via the disclosure triangle in the main track. The display looks very similar to the ones for track alternatives and take folders, as we'll see later in the course. As you can see, subtracks are hidden or displayed in both the tracks area and the mixer. Normally, this behavior would be linked, so if you open or close a stack in one pane, the display matches in the other. However, there's an option to disable this linking in the mixer's view submenu, labeled Follow Track Stacks. If this is turned off, then the open closed status of a stack will be independent in the tracks and mixer areas. This can be very handy. There are certain times when you might want a stack to be open in one area and not the other. For example, if a stack consists of several tracks of the elements of a virtual drum kit, it might make sense to have it closed in the tracks window, since with that kind of stack, the drum recordings, the regions, will only be on the main track. But at the same time, it would also make sense to have it open in the mixer window so all the different kit pieces can be seen and tweaked conveniently. We'll look at a drum stack like this in more detail in the next clip. You can create a stack by selecting a group of tracks and choosing the Create Track Stack option, either from the track menu, or by right-clicking, or by using the shortcut Shift-Command-D. You'll be presented with an option for two different kinds of track stacks, folder stacks and summing stacks. Once the stack has been created, you can then add or remove subtracks by dragging them in or out of the stack, like this. Folder stacks are the simpler of the two types, so let's look at them first. A folder stack is simply an organizational tool for a group of subtracks. It offers a number of conveniences. With a group of subtracks and a folder stack, you can hide them, making for a less cluttered view in a large, busy project. Plus, you can more easily edit them as a group by dealing with a single track instead of having to wrangle a bunch of them. The main track in a folder stack is the Stack Master, and it functions as a VCA fader. That is, it lets you control level, mute, and solo functions for all the subtracks from that Track Master strip. Another nice convenience, especially with large stacks. As you can see, the controls and the individual subtracks are untouched when you adjust the stack master. You can get the same result by rerouting the subtracks into an aux, but this offers that control without having to alter the subtracts output routings, which you may not always want to do. That's the advantage of a VCA fader, like the fader stack's stack master strip. The other type of track stack is a summing stack. This does create an aux and reroutes all the subtracts output settings through it for a more traditional subgroup type arrangement. This not only lets you control level, mute, and solo for the subtracks as a group, but it also allows for adding overall processing to the stack. And if the subtracks are a collection of virtual instrument tracks, there are a couple of added bonuses. You can play and record a part that addresses all those instrument tracks at the same time. Not only are the outputs of all the subtracks routed through the summing stack's main aux, but incoming MIDI is distributed to all the enclosed subtracks as well. For years, Logic took criticism for not having a fully implemented multi timbral capability for virtual instruments. But summing stacks provide a particularly flexible way of implementing that kind of functionality. 
a multi-timbral summing stack full of instruments can also include sends and aux returns for incorporating reverb and effects within the stack, and the internal routing between them is fully flexible. Best of all, if you create a multi-timbral, multi-instrument summing stack, you can save the entire thing as a patch and load it into any Logic project, complete with all of its component parts, both instruments and send and return effects. Logic handles the assignment of track objects and internal busing automatically. When the saved track numbers are already in use in a project, Logic creates new tracks and buses for the subtracks in the stack using the next highest numbered tracks, boxes, and buses. It's all handled seamlessly behind the scenes, and the user doesn't really have to worry about any of that housekeeping. Next up, I'll take a look at a few examples of track stacks in action. <laughs> 